So, as they said, my name is Martin. I will be sitting because I feel more comfortable and I need to change my own slides. So, uh, I'm the co founder and VFX supervisor for New Buyan Effects. And today I'll ask you just to keep it real and uh, take a while while I'll explain to you all the challenges to bringing realistic VFX to VR. And um, we've been uh, around for a year almost now, and for that uh, period we managed to work on some uh, really interesting uh, future films. We also served some short movies, commercials, and recently we decided to go deeper into the next big thing, like people say, the VR, and see what all the fuss is about. But uh, before I move to that point, uh, let me show you some moving pictures and see what uh, we're doing at New Guiana Film Studios. some new toys at the facility and we wanted to try and use them in a side project so um, we received a 3D scanning system and also a motion capturing stage and we wanted to try and test them to the max that's why we came up with a, a short um, one-shot movie like a cinematic sequence uh, we had it rendered out using V-Ray and afterwards our compositors created the cinematic look like a game so, a long story short, I will show it to you now, and afterwards, I will show you how we moved forward from that point and created the same thing in VR. So as you notice, it's still a work in progress. The referee is grayed out, 
but we just wanted to add him. And um, we wanted to try and recreate the same fight, but in VR, to try and see what the technology can offer. So, a little bit about the VR. Uh, VR is a computer-generated scenario uh, that is used to simulate the sense and perception in the human, in the viewer. Uh, VR as a technology and as an idea is not something new. It's uh, been around since uh, the 1860s, which is way ago. And uh, nowadays, the uh, rise of the VR technology is mainly because of the use of uh, mobile phones. All the uh, VR headsets that are used today are based on the uh, smartphone technology. So uh, they're using the gyroscopes and motion sensor, uh, sensor tracking for getting an estimate of uh, the head movement, body position, and uh, also they're using uh, HD screens to represent stereoscopic. Stereoscopy and uh, also uh, they're powered by uh, the latest uh, uh, CPUs. And uh, watching how fast the VR uh, is being adopted by the world, we decided to try and um, go deeper into that technology and see what it can offer. And uh, while we were working on that sequence, we decided to see if we can translate that in VR space and how will that look and feel and if it, if it will help to the story overall. So, um, some more details about the VR. Um, basically, recent, uh, recent years we uh, all get used to going to the movies and watching uh, 3D movies, like sterile movies. Uh, the VR technology is with the same principle. We have two spherical offset cameras that are separated uh, with an interaction distance at 0 0.65. That is the distance close to uh, the distance between the two eyes. And um, while uh, the regular uh, movies that we go to see use the toe-in camera position like that, so you can be able to uh, push in or pull out objects, uh, that technology is really great for uh, movies and big screens for objects that are uh, far away, but uh, that's not uh, plausible for uh, when the screen is actually in front of you. That's why uh, there's no towing in VR. Everything is, uh, the two cameras are parallel, and uh, you need more precision, but uh, you get more separation and more feeling of depth. And now the challenges that we faced when we started uh, working on the VR. And uh, the first main issue that we encountered was with the animation itself. Uh, all the time that we were working on the real uh, cinematic sequence with the virtual camera, we were facing, uh, uh, we were looking through the virtual camera and uh, we were just uh, considering to fix all the animation errors uh, that are visible through the camera saying uh, we didn't focus on any uh, foot slipping or crossing uh, that wasn't visible in the camera. That uh, thing is not good when you're working with VR Im imagery because you're looking at everything. You can see absolutely everything, so there is no way to hide artifacts in animation, in modeling, and in texturing. Um, the other thing is that there shouldn't be any rapid camera movement. That's because uh, when the viewer is sitting and you, you start seeing images that are flashing by very fast in front of your eyes, the brain gets confused and you get nauseous. And uh, that might be an uh, effect that some of the directors want to achieve, but uh, for our experience we decided not to use it. And here, as you saw in the original uh, that we showed you, the cinematic version, let's call it, um, the camera was moving too fast, so that was a no-no in VR because everyone got nauseous. And uh, the other thing is no hard cuts. Hard cuts hurt because uh, it's like teleporting from one place to another place and you get nauseous again. And like Edna said, no capes. <laughs> uh, I, I have a solid background as a compositor, and as a compositor, I love playing with uh, all the uh, 3D passes that we see from the lighting department. I like to tweak something here, do a color correction there, basically destroy all the hard work and move forward. 
and uh, I have a goodie back with all those composting tricks that I was willing and anticipating to use over the VR beast. But boy, I, I found myself in real trouble. And uh, here I will mention some of the composting uh, do's and don'ts that work and don't work in VR. And my favorite thing, volume raise. That's a no-no in VR, a no-no. The 2D uh, volume uh, race look often and unnatural in VR, basically because uh, we are used to seeing and the light physically moves in linear direction. But when you um, put that over a lot long image, a VR image, it warps and looks like that. I don't know if you can tell how warped it looks. And uh, that can distract the viewer and can push her out of the whole experience and uh, it's not a good and fun thing to look at. Uh, we tried some uh, ways to surpass that uh, volume race don't look good. And uh, finally we achieved uh, pretty good results using just a small amount of volume race that we placed in the middle of the screen. And we also used uh, 3D cards that were with uh, volume rays and rather than using um, Nuke and a spherical camera. Uh, for the next thing, uh, Michael Bay and JJ Abrams will be very disappointed because there are no lens flares and no light leaks in VR. Uh, lens flares and light leaks are physical artifacts that are created when you point a camera or a lens towards a light source. So basically when you're moving uh, around the camera and the lens, you get all those uh, artifacts that are moving around and as soon as you point the camera away from the light source, uh, the lens flares fade and they disappear. So if you want to try and recreate that same effect in VR, uh, using the technology that currently we have, uh, it's not plausible and it's not doable because the headset is actually the lens and the camera. So if you want to achieve that, um, the lens player needs to be dynamically triggered by the, uh, by the point that uh, the viewer is looking and in relation to the virtual light source that you have in the scene. And thus, so far, that's not plausible and it can't happen. And uh, one other thing that I want to mention is about um, limiting the view. So basically it's not necessary all the images that you see during uh, VR experience to be uh, 360 degree renders that the viewer can explore. You can limit the view and uh, point the viewer in the right direction. Uh, because uh, that is a creative goal and it's a filmmaker's goal. Because let's say that uh, you spend tons of hours uh, to design the most elaborate, most good-looking and awesome explosion that the world has ever seen. And you find yourself that the viewer is looking and exploring the back and is looking at the total blackness. So another way that you can try and avoid this is to limit his point of view so he can be only looking at the explosion. And the other thing that uh, really helps here are the sound designs. So basically the human uh, perceptions are really easily guided by sound cues. So uh, uh, a huge part of the experience is the sound when you have the proper sound. Um, ambient sound that is currently very popular. You can guide the viewers to the right direction and see what the filmmaker wants to see. Just uh, remember how the talking pictures uh, changed cinema way back. And um, we're closing to the deadline. And uh, as for the VR experience that we created and that uh, we wanted to show to everyone, uh, the first elements that we uh, achieved and created were the two fighters. And the next thing that we needed is the environment that they are fighting in. And that was the last thing that created. And uh, in our cal calculation, there was not a physical way and time to render everything out in time for the deadline. The thing to consider here is that we were rendering almost 4,000 frames per eye, which is totaling 8,000 frames. And there was no way that uh, our rendering farm can handle that capacity. Even though V-Ray is really, really fast with rendering, still there was no time for us to do it. So 
so uh, we started um, being creative and uh, as, a, as I always say to me the greatest force that can um, make the artist start being creative and um, unlock his potential and his solving skills is the deadline. Deadline when the work is piling and uh, you're running out of coffee and you just need to figure out how to deliver stuff, you get creative. So our approach here was we rendered the whole uh, VR experience environment, which is a prison, and we rendered the cells, um, the lighting ring, the lamps, everything as a lat long image in a single frame. And afterwards, we used that lat long image in Nuke and we projected it on a sphere. And uh, we exported from Maya an Alembic cache with the uh, moving camera that we originally had and used that to just uh, uh, reshoot the environment's movement and composited that on top. We used the absolute same technique for the fighting ring and for the lamps, but uh, uh, this time we used a, a cylinder because we needed a flat surface for the fighters to step on, otherwise the 3D perception and the stereo was getting off. Um, the things that uh, afterwards we needed to consider about the delivery, and uh, here we were battled by uh, the technology and the hardware that are currently available, is that we were trying to um, get a pretty decent um, sweet spot between file sizes and image quality. Uh, we tried delivering uh, the experience on mobile devices, which was a uh, true disaster because mobile devices can't handle big enough images and the uh, stereo experience was really crappy and the uh, phones were constantly getting warm and the batteries were dying, so that was a no -no. Currently there are some new um, technologies and um, uh, compression algorithms that are becoming available which are trying to aim and solve exactly that problem that, like the high efficiency video codec and the AV1. Uh, so basically they're trying to uh, achieve a bigger quality of the image, smaller uh, file size and uh, bigger bit rates which is perfect for streaming VR to um, mobile devices. I hope, I don't know whether you get the chance to go to our VR booth actually, so you can check over there the VR experience that we had rendered using our own goggles. So if you didn't, we still have some time to go over and see it. And um, as a VR technology um, is constantly improving and moving forward, there are tons of ways that uh, it can be used. Uh, it can be, currently for me, it can be really helpful uh, for uh, added uh, movie experience details like uh, extra bits of trivia and adding layers to the story that people already have heard. Um, it's an interesting approach also in the pre-production phase of uh, movies where you get the uh, experience um, and you get the the idea of how a set can look and how everything at the end will look. So you can basically ask the director to use the VR technology to decide where the camera will be, what he will see, and get uh, creative and make creative decisions that will later on help with the movie and make it look even more beautiful and more realistic and fantastic. Uh, that's another way that you can evaluate and see uh, 3D creatures when there are 3D turntables you just put the goggles and look uh, what they will look uh, in the final renders in the movie. Another easy way to decide. Uh, a lot of uh, other ways to use that technology is also for uh, architects. It's a really nice thing to put on the glasses and just uh, be inside the environment and um, see how the buildings, let's say, uh, react to different lighting scenarios, uh, see uh, what is the surrounding. Um, it's also great for product presentations, and all those stuff that I'm saying require 3D artists that uh, they need to create those assets, render them up, and afterwards show them. And um, uh, while well, the best practices uh, are good, to adhere. Um, VR is still uh, an open playground 
and the VR storytelling is um, being written right now through trial and error and um, there are no experts yet, they're still to come. And basically that it is. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, please, now is the time.